As soon as we got off the train, an army officer walked up to us and told us that he was Lieutenant Colonel Phelps and that he, Lieutenant Colonel Phelps, the deputy commander of Midland Army Air Base, and that he, Lieutenant Colonel Phelps, was born in Texas, he was raised in Texas, and he expected to die in Texas. And if we Negroes didn't know our place, while we were in this state of Texas, he spelled it out for us. One, we could not eat in the officer's mess. Two, we could not go to the officer's club. Three, we could not sit in the officer's section in the theater. And four, if you go to town, you had to ride the back of the bus. I knew I was in trouble as soon as he said that. <laughs> 12 o'clock shop, we arrived at the cadet mess hall for our noonday meal. 12, 5, 10, 15, 20, no food. But we observed that every time a group of white cadets came in, they were promptly fed. After the last group had been fed, they started bringing us off as what was left of the food. By this time, we were so mad until we told them to take the food and shove it, walked over to the officer's mess and demanded that we be fed. Tuesday morning after breakfast, Colonel Phelps came over to our quarters with his crew, demanding to know why we had disobeyed his orders. We told him what had taken place, and he said that was no excuse as far as he was concerned and would have us all court-martialed. Well, he failed in his court-martial attempt, but he promised every white officer on the base he would get him with those Negroes as the last thing he ever did. Two weeks later, he tried to have me and five of my men court-martialed again. That failed. Two weeks before graduation, he tried to have me and my classmates sent to some ungodforsaken island in the Pacific. That failed. Two weeks later, find us at Godman Field where the Negro pilots were in training. Two weeks as soon as we arrived there, the Army brass realized they didn't have enough pilots to accommodate all us navigators. So we were sent back to Tuskegee to train to become pilots. During my six months of training at Tuskegee Army Air Base, Phelps tried to have me thrown out of pilot training twice. When we arrived at Tuskegee Army Air Base to retrain pilots, there were 27 of us in my group. When graduation day rolled around, there were only three of us left. Phelps had got even with 24 of us. And up until the last week of my, before I became a pilot, Phelps tried his best to have me thrown out of pilot training. The only thing he was able to do was to keep me from getting promoted. You see, they have a great memory. In the Army, when it was absolutely segregated, I also served and in, when integration took place, in many cases I was the, the only colored person in the unit or as an officer. And I, I don't know how we in Tuskegee really differed from the other people when we were learning to fly. We all had the desire for it. And at Tuskegee, I thought we had some good instructors there. Although well, some may have been racist, whatnot, but they did turn out a good group of people. And uh, the, the thing we had, all of us had, was a desire to fly, and a desire to fly for our country, because it was our country too. Even though there's some flaws in it, it was our country. I'd like to reiterate the fact that they, if you look through the records, you'll find that the Tuskegee Airmen had the same training experiences that all other pilots trained by the United States Army Air Force had. The only difference between us and the other folk is we had to deal with the dimension of racism. I have to admit that during my time at the Tuskegee Airmen, I realized and I found out strongly that not all white people are racist and not all black people has been one's best interests at heart. And I can assure you that if those, if everybody white had been a racist, I, I believe George and none of us would have made it. <laughs>